Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Ellie Knight, and I am back with a review of the book Foundation by Mercedes Lackey. Now, for those of you who don't know, Foundation... Well, actually, first let me give you a little little summary of who Mercedes Lackey is. Oh, I just dropped my glasses. Mercedes Lackey is considered one of the grandmothers of the modern fantasy genre. Um, she and Tamara Pierce and Marion Zimmer Bradley. Now, Marion Zimmer Bradley is a freak and a creep, so uh, I don't read her, but um, people probably know Tamara Pierce. She did, you know, Alana the Lioness and the, uh, you know, Dane the Wild Mage and the, the Circle of Magic about the four kids who have, like, weird magical powers over things like plants and, and metal and stuff. Um, and then there's Mary, and I think she was published after Mercedes Lackey. Um, but Mercedes Lackey is the, she wrote the Valdemar series and the Elemental Mages and the Dragon Jouster series. And she, she's done a lot. I, I want to say she's written like 200 novels at least, but I, I could be overestimating. I know she's worked on a lot of things that I haven't read, so that's the other thing. Um, I was introduced to her by um, a friend who has since passed away. Um, when I was a freshman in high school, uh, I met this girl in my PE class, and um, turned out we both liked Ann Bishop, and so then we were talking about books, and she's like, have you ever read Mercedes Lackey? And I said, I don't think so. And so she loaned me some book. I don't even remember what it was. Um, I think it may have been the very first Heralds of Valdemar book, which is called Arrows of the Queen. And then, uh, you know, she loaned me a couple at a time, but she also had other books that I wanted to read. And then when I was a sophomore in high school, I got grounded from reading because, you know, when you have a kid who doesn't do anything else, like, what are you supposed to take away if they get in trouble, right? Um, I got grounded from reading, and my parents packed up all my books, so, and they also confiscated my public library card. So my only recourse was to make frequent use of my high school library, and they had a small Mercedes Lackey section, and that's how I got into... Um, I read some of the Valdemar bo books that I hadn't read yet, um, and then I also... Uh, got into the elemental mages. So the her writing of the Valdemar series has been not not sporadic. What's the word I want? Um, she basically like her timeline. The books chronologically are not published in chronological order. That's that's what it is. Um, and so the the Valdemar books are about the kingdom of Valdemar. And the kingdom of Valdemar is, spe it's a, you know, a typical high fantasy kingdom, you know, with swords and, and spells and, and a king and, or sometimes a queen and quests and things like that. But the thing that makes it stand out is that apparently it was a kingdom founded by refugees and the king, the guy who became the king, who he was a baron, Baron Valdemar, and then he became the king of the new kingdom of Valdemar. Um, he was, he basically was like, I know that I'm not a terrible person and I know that my, my heir is not a terrible person, but how do I ensure that, you know, the kingdom is run by not terrible people after I'm dead? And so he prayed to like all the gods that ever were for all the different kingdoms and, and races and religions. And they created these things called companions and companions are white horses but they have um, my, what's called mind magic. So, like, they're telepathic. They're empathic up to a point. They can tell when people are lying. Um, they have some extraordinary abilities. It differs between the different companions. Um, and each companion is assigned to a different person in the kingdom. Sometimes outside of the kingdom, but usually in the kingdom. And that person has to have some kind of magical power. They have to either be like a telepath or, you know, be able to start fires with their mind or cast spells or talk to animals or something. They have to be able to do something. 
but then they get chosen and it forms like this telepathic empathic bond between their two souls and so the heralds of Valdemar are the chosen are the companions and they're human writers and they basically you know the king has to be a compa- a, a, a herald or if it's a queen she has to be a herald in order to be the heir you have to be a herald you know blah 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 blah, blah. so uh so like you get this information in the first book Heirs of the Queen, which is like in the middle of the timeline, but Foundation is near the beginning of the timeline. And the reason I'm I'm talking about that one first, even though I've never done a review for a Valdemar book before, is because I just recently reread Foundation because Foundation is each so like the Heralds of Valdemar series is broken up into into mini series. So there's like the Heralds of Valdemar trilogy, which is the first trilogy that was written, the Arrows trilogy. And then there's, like, you know, the Mage Winds trilogy, the Mage Storm trilogy, the, you know, the the Last Herald Mage trilogy, blah, 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 blah. So the, I'm recent, I'm trying to get through the entire Valdemar series. But the thing is, is that I know for a fact, it's, it's like a pride thing because I'm not actually enjoying this subset as much, but there's, um... A series of 10 books in like a, a 10 book mini series and I think it's called like the Herald Spies series or something and it's not very good the first book is foundation and it was okay but then it just got worse and worse and I knew it would because I had read the first three and a half books I think before I started this reread and so my the way I've been reading it is that I've been reading half of one of the Herald Spies books and then reading a different book in the in the Valdemar series and then finishing that Herald Spies book, reading a different book in the Valdemar series and then, you know, going back and forth so that I don't gouge my own eyes out with a spoon trying to get through these books because they're so fucking annoying. Oh my God, they're so annoying. So Foundation is set during the time when they are building the college they call it a collegium um where they're where they end up training the herald the herald trainees and the main character mags was raised um like his parents were killed he was found by border patrol basically sold to a uh, a guy who owns a mine and has been working in the guy's kitchen and then in the guy's mine for like since he was like a baby basically like he was he he ever since he could crawl he's been doing like some kind of you know task but um the the basic premise of of the valdemar series um each book or each subset is pretty standard which is oh my god max shut up that's my mom's cat um it's, it's pretty similar to uh, to each other. You've got some character who has some kind of, you know, weird magical ability, and they are in, like, a super shitty situation, and then something happens, and it turns out, oh, they're actually the chosen writer of a herald companion, and now they're going to go be a herald and do something important. And, you know, that basically, like, the... I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. Like, the oldest... Uh, the chronologically the earliest Harold book is the one about uh, Harold Vaniel and he like his dad is super abusive and homophobic and he's gay <laughs> um, there's Harold Laven who accidentally killed three people because they were torturing him and he didn't know that he had the ability to start fires with his mind so he accidentally blew them up um, and his parents were abusive too uh, there's the original Harold um, from the original first published series, uh, Harold Talia, who was raised by Mercedes Lackey's very, very inaccurate idea of what Mormons are like. Um, I did not get offended because it was the 70s and people just didn't know. But uh, she's raised by an inaccurate portrayal of Mormons because she's a Mormon. And they basically want to marry her off, and so her life is terrible, and then she manages to escape and become a herald. So, that, you know, it's basically all the same. Like, kid has a shit life, then suddenly, you know, hey, magical powers and Harold Companion. 
So that happens to Mags. He manages to get out of the mine because his herald comes and is like, I'm here to be your companion. Or his companion comes and is like, I'm here to be your companion and you're going to be a herald. And, like, Mags is almost feral, basically, because he of the way he was raised. So, like, he can kind of talk, but not he's not very eloquent. And he doesn't understand a lot of things. And he's very focused on survival. And he's afraid of, like, everything. Um, and his companion, Dallin, helps him deal with these things. So the first book, Foundation, is basically just Mags getting used to being at the Collegium, learning how to use his powers, making some friends. He makes friends with um, a girl from the Bardic Collegium, whose dad is, like, a super famous bard, but he's, like, super, super not a great guy. You don't meet him in this book. You meet him in a later book, but he's, like, super terrible. Um, and then he makes friends also with a... Uh, with a herald trainee who doesn't have magic, which is very unusual, apparently. Um, or at least his family thinks it's unusual. Um, everyone in his family has the ability to heal with magic except him. And so they think he's useless, and they want him to get married and have babies in the hopes that then um, he will produce babies who have magic. And uh, the three of them, basically, it's just them getting through, getting through their classes. This is why I don't mind this first book is they're just, like, getting through their classes and civilizing Mags a little bit. Um, Mags is short for Magpie, by the way, because he's got really good eyes. Um, and then uh, these, these quote-unquote foreigners show up at the Collegium, and they're guests of the Crown. They're supposed to be there, but then it turns out that actually those people are not supposed to be there. They're imposters. Clue number one, the imposter is a phantom. Anyway, um, sorry, I've been watching Llamas with Hats recently. Uh, and so, like, they get involved in this whole thing, and really this part's not important, and that should actually tell you about the quality of the book, because the plot itself, as far as I'm concerned, is boring as shit. Like, I actually was really enjoying the, you know, Mags just learning how to, how to be at school and stuff, um... But once they started to get, like, involved with, like, the political machinations and things, I was like, this is not entertaining at all. This is, this is boring. I don't care about these people. I don't care about these villains. I don't care about this king. I don't care about any of these grown-ups. They all suck. And that's always a bad thing. And, and the, oh, the other thing is, is that the Valdemar series is not teen fiction. Although most of the protagonists start off when they're in their teens. Um, I think the youngest was, uh, was, uh, Harold Talia when she was 13, I think at the beginning. Um, but they're not considered YA mostly because the series follows these characters until they're, you know, usually in their twenties or thirties. And so like, I don't know, that's always a problem in a, in a book series. If like most of the characters are boring and you don't give two flying fucks about them. And the other thing is, is I didn't really give a flying fuck about Mags because he is the main character. He's not going to die, you know? Um, now, granted, also, I was really depressed when I was working through, the, when I was, you know, making my way through this book. And, you know, one, one of the side effects of depression is often that you don't care about shit. So maybe that's part of the reason. Um, you know, I liked it better than, I, I'm, I'm on the third book? Or the sec I'm on the fourth book now, um, and I'm taking a break because it's driving me batshit. But uh, you know, I was making my way through the, through this. I'm making my way through the series, and this is the best book in the series, and it's bleh. So that should tell you something. Um, you know, I liked it, but I did. I didn't care about these, and I think part of it also is like some of there's some mysteries that the characters are trying to figure out that you as the reader, if you've already read um, most of the books, pretty much any of the book, other books in the series, then like, they're not mysteries. You know, what's going on. Like there's this guy, one of the foreigners, quote unquote, who is losing his mind because he can't sleep and he's awake all the time. And it's because he feels like somebody's staring at him. And, like, the moment they describe what he is telling them is there, 
I knew what it was because these are creatures that most people can't see, but you're told about them in, a, in other books. And so I'm like, oh, okay, so that's a thing. But then they spend like chapters and chapters trying to figure out what could this thing be? And then um, one, the, the Bardic student is like, wait, I think I know what it is because there's a song about it that mentions these things that stare at you, but I don't know what they do. And I'm like, I know what they do, but of course you guys can't talk to me because your character is in a book. And so like, I spent the entire time that like they were visiting this subplot being like, it's this, this is what's happening. Can we just like, can you figure out that this is what's happening now so we can move on to something else? And like, there's questions about like who Mags, Pit Mags' parents are. And I'm like, I don't actually care. And, like, Mags cares because he's got this idea that he has, quote-unquote, bad blood. But, like, Mags is... Honestly, like, as long... I, I don't not care about Mags, but I start caring about him more in the second book because of stuff that goes down in that book. And it just... It seems like, you know, yeah, he wants to know who his parents are, but the really, really bad thing that happened to him, which was that he was basically a slave to the guy who owned the mine at the beginning of the book, that got taken care of, like, really fast. And, like, that guy went to jail, and Max is safe, and everything got fixed with that. And so it's like, okay, I don't really... Like, the danger quotient isn't there. And then suddenly it is there, but not really, because most of the things that that are actually dangerous aren't actually dangerous because like the thing with the the staring eyes like it's not a ghost it's not a demon they don't need to worry about it attacking people you know blah 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 so like who cares right so that's you know that's a problem with the book you know it's it's just it's a little bland i would i would give it maybe like mm, two and a half stars like you know it's it's a solid 50 percent which you know, sounds terrible because 50% on a test is failing, but it, you know, it, it's not a terrible book. She's written terrible books. Um, she's written fantastic books, but she's also written terrible books. And I think also part of it is this is something I've noticed with her because I've been reading books. I've been reading her work from the time that, well, I'm not sure how to phrase this. She's been writing consistently and putting out books, I want to say at least one book every year, since, like, the early 70s, I think. And so, like, I've been reading her work that was published back then, and, you know, her work that has been published in the subsequent years. And I've seen how her style has changed over the years, and, you know, that happens. I mean, I can see it in my own work. It just, it happens. But one of the things that has happened is that she is a little more explainy now. Um, and because of that, sometimes it works. Um, like in her in her Dragon Jouster series, she's very explainy. But it works, and it keeps the tension and the pace. It doesn't work in this. Um, sometimes I, I really need that explanation that she's given because I don't understand like why people are doing things they're doing or what is going on. But other times I'm like, you know, you could just say he does a thing. You don't need to tell me why, why he's doing it is obvious. And, you know, and not, and it's, it's not that she sucks. I mean, cause she's great. She's a great writer, or at least I'm pretty sure she's still a great writer because I really like the other books that are not in this subset that she's putting out right now. But this subset is terrible. Um, it's just that, you know, you don't really... I don't know. It's just there's no, um, I guess, no impetus behind the prose. Like, there's no sense of, like, danger getting closer and closer. It's just Max is at school. Max has things he wants to do. Okay, you go do those things, Max. You know, good for you. Oh, something thwarted you? Well, that's too bad. You'll be okay, though. You know, and then suddenly, all of a sudden, like, people are in danger for, like, you know, it's like, oh, there's going to be a blizzard. Okay, well, everyone's going to be fine. Wait, Mags' friend is missing. Well, maybe he got lost in the blizzard. 
And then it turns out, oh no, he actually did not get lost in the blizzard. But like all the, like basically it's, it's very, <clears throat> I don't know. It just, it turns into, it goes from being like an academic fantasy, you know, like a fantasy school kind of thing to all of a sudden like a hostage situation to nothing. You know, that's the end of the book. So like, it's like very staid and easy until the last 50 pages. And then, and it's like three or 400 page book. And then all of a sudden it's like danger. And it's like, wait, what? And then it's like, danger's over. And it's like, wait, what? So the book's not bad. It's just not great. But the reason I wanted to read, I wanted to do this review now is because this book isn't bad, but the next book and the book after that are fucking terrible. And I want to talk about that. Anyway, so my phone actually just cut out in the middle of me saying a sentence, which is probably my cue that I need to stop talking now. Anyway, so yeah, that's my review for Foundation by Mercedes Lackey. It's not great, but it's not, like, super sucky terrible. Um, the only problem is, is that if you actually end up caring about the secret that is revealed at the end about the fact that one of the villains actually recognizes Mags somehow, even though he's been, he's never seen the guy before, if you actually care about this information, then you have to read the next several books in the series. But if you don't care about this information, you can just stop at the end of this book. So, press the like button if you love me, subscribe for more of me, and of course, shout out to my patrons, Amanda, Kati, Chelsea, Cynthia, Gwen, Lena, Lorian, Marion, Morgan, Shinuka, and Tina. You guys make this possible. Thank you so much for your support. I love you all. And remember, everybody, you are loved and you're doing great. Don't let the man get you down. And I will see you guys, talk to you guys, and eh, whatever. I'll talk to you guys when I do my next review. Bye!